The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting story transcribed from his brilliant career. This master of the big cats captures ferocious jungle beasts and trains them to perform under the big top in the circus, where there are always thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. This is the story... In Search of a Myth. It was during an off-season that Clyde Beatty was making a series of appearances in Europe. Called to London for an engagement, he was resting in his dressing room after the show when his wife, Harriet, came rushing in. Clyde, hmm? take off that robe. Why? What's wrong with it? You're about to have a visitor. A very important visitor. Okay, okay, I'll take it off, but uh, well, tell me who's coming. Cavendish Benting. He's an earl. His title is Sir Harry. Well, why didn't you say so? Oh, just a moment. Good evening, madam. I'm Cavendish Benting. Oh, we were expecting you. Oh, come in. I'm Harry Beatty. Come. Oh, Clyde, this is Sir Harry. Hi. Sir Harry, my husband, Clyde Beatty. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> An honor, Beatty. Enjoyed your performance immensely. Thanks. Have a seat. Uh, thank you, sir. Now, uh, is there something I can do for you? Well, if you don't mind, Beatty, I'll come quickly to the point. Great. Do I understand correctly that when you leave England, you propose to make a safari into the South African jungle? That's right. The purpose, I take it, is to capture some wild beasts. Right. Perhaps then I might press a commission upon you to make a quest for a particular animal for me. Oh, I suppose so. Sure. Splendid. Uh, there'll be a substantial fee, of course. What uh, animal did you have in mind, sir? Lion, tiger, gorilla, perhaps? No. An animal that we read about in mythology. An animal that supposedly doesn't exist. There's one great horn growing from the middle of its forehead. You mean... Yes, Beatty. I want you to bring me back a unicorn. <laughs> We will return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty's adventure in search of a myth. Sir Harry, are you sure you meant to say a unicorn? Precisely. But, well, that's impossible. There's no such animal. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree, Beatty. Of course, there's an animal in India called the oryx. It's referred to as a unicorn, but it actually has two horns. Also, there's a species of rhinoceros with a single horn in Africa. No, but... the beast I have in mind is like this. My, what a beautiful ring. Yes, that crest is my family coat of arms. You see, it features a unicorn rampant upon a field of blue and gold. But that animal is legendary. Only a mythological creature. Yes, I know. <laughs> and you want me to find one for you? I repeat, I'm inclined to agree there is no such beast. Well? However, there seem to be others not of the same opinion. But surely you're not going to waste your time and money in search of a myth. I I find it difficult to explain this queer business, Mr. Beatty. However, there is someone at my home who can, graphically. A uh, car is outside the theater. Uh, could you come with me for just an hour or two? Well, Sir Harry, you've hit one of the many weaknesses in my character. I'm loaded with curiosity. Then you come. <laughs> Knowing Clyde as I do, a herd of elephants couldn't keep him away. Give me five minutes to change my clothes. I'll be right with you. countryside, Sir Harry. Yes, you picked the best time of year to visit England. Harriet, look at the size of that place over there. Why, it's like a castle. You'll get a closer look in a few moments. Matter of fact, you'll be going inside. Is that your home? Yes, it's been in our family for centuries. Uh, before we go inside, I should like to tell you a bit about the person we are going to see. I would have brought him to you in London, but unfortunately he is unable to travel. He is an invalid. Oh, that's a shame. I'm glad, though, not to miss the opportunity of seeing this wonderful place. Uh, tell me, before he got sick, was this man an adventurer or an explorer? No. But he is an expert in certain fields. Oh, a professor, perhaps? One day, I, I hope he might be. You see, he's my son. He's 12 years old. <laughs> Mr. 
His room is just at the head of the stairs. Here we are. Come in. How goes it, old chap? Why, sir, you're back early from the city? Yes, I brought along some visitors. Oh, do come in. Mr. and Mrs. Beatty. This is my son, Aiden. How, How do you do, do it? Oh, I say, aren't you Mr. Clyde Beatty? The Clyde Beatty? Well, I don't quite know what you mean by the, but uh, my name is Clyde Beatty. Oh, I've read your books over and over. I've heard stories about your adventures around the world. and I, I've i spoken with chaps who've seen you battle the big cats in the arena. Well, when you're up and around, I'll see that you have a front seat for my show. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, I'm so happy you've come to visit me. We're happy to be here, Aiden. You, you will stay for tea? Oh, of course they will. Good. Aiden, the Beatties are about to set off for South Africa. Truly? A hunting expedition, Mr. Beatty? We're going to bring back some animals for the circus. It's going to be quite a trip. We'll sail from here to Cape Town. And then we push up to Johannesburg. Oh, wonderful. And then on to Lake Makarikari. Oh, that's right in the center of Bukwana land. It's a very large lake. My, you certainly know South Africa. Oh, I've studied every inch of it, ma'am. I, uh, I, I suppose you've studied about all the animals in Africa, too. Oh, I have, sir. All of them. Well, on this safari, I imagine we'll see some of all the species there. If, if you had your pick, what would you want us to bring back? Oh, sir, I'd want you to bring back a unicorn. Well, you, you think that's silly, don't you, sir? Well, I... I don't blame you, Mr. Beatty. At one time, I thought so, too. You mean something has changed your mind? Yes, Mrs. Beatty. Of course, when I was a very small boy, I did believe that the device on our family crest was a real animal. It is a unicorn, you see. When I was old enough to read, I realized the horse-like creature with a long, sharp, twisted horn set in the middle of its forehead was simply a myth. And what's your feeling now? Oh, now I'm certain there are such animals. At least there's one. Well, what makes you think so, Aiden? A letter my brother Joffrey wrote to me. He's an engineer with the Diamond Syndicate out in Africa, near Kimberley. Well, did he write to you that he'd seen such an animal? No, it was a friend of his who saw it. A man named Rourke. Is this uh, Rourke a trustworthy witness? Oh, I don't know. But I believe my brother wouldn't have relayed his story if he were not. I see. Where was it that Mr. Rourke saw the animal? In the Okavanga Swamp region. Well, that's not far from where we're going. No, it's just northwest of Lake Makarakari. Aiden, would it mean so very much to you to know that such a creature exists? Oh, almost, almost more than anything in the world. Oh, excuse me, it's the house phone. Yes? Oh, have him come up. The doctor is here, Aiden. We'll step out until he leaves. You will come back for tea? Of course. We want to hear more about that unicorn of yours. I'll expect you back. Hmm. Shall we go into this room? All right. He's such a sweet child, Sir Harry. And as you said, he's a bright boy. Hmm. Thank you both. Uh, now about that unicorn business. I observed that you were very sensitive to the boy's deep feeling in the matter. It made his eyes shine. Yes. That and the poison in his system from his illness. <clears throat> I don't pretend to fully understand such things. But to Aiden, the unicorn and our family crest, and a word from his brother concerning a real unicorn have to him become a symbol of faith. I think I understand. I know I do. Then you will look into this story of Rooks when you go to South Africa? You bet we will. And you can tell that boy of yours, if there's a unicorn on that continent, we'll find it. If you tell him yourself, he'll be tremendously impressed. You see, he admires you very much. Well, I'll tell him. Just one thing. Yes? The, the boy might not be here when you return. Oh. But... It would help him to know you have gone in search of his unicorn. I, Beatty, will continue with his story in a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty and In Search of a Myth. Beatties thought they were going to Africa just to bring back lions and other usual circus-type animals. But when they sailed from England, they had determined also to hunt for a fabulous creature, a unicorn. The search started in a hot and dusty office in Kimberley, where Clyde was questioning Sir Harry's eldest son about a letter he had sent to his invalid brother in England. You don't mind my calling you Joffrey, do you? Of course not. Cavendish Benting is rather a mouthful. Uh, about this Rourke fellow you mentioned in your letter to Aiden, is he a trustworthy person? Well, yes and no. He's one of those characters one finds here in Africa. One time he was young and strong, fresh out of Ireland. 
out here to find the largest diamond in the Kimberley. I suppose he didn't find it. No. Like a lot of others, he did not. Like a lot of others who were disappointed and disillusioned, he developed a great thirst. One that mere water could not satisfy. I see. How did he ever get in the region of uh, Okavango, where he was supposed to have seen the one-horned beast? He became a trader, and then a guide. A rather good one, too, I'm led to believe. Do, uh, do you believe his story about seeing a unicorn in the Okavango swamps? Hmm. That's not an easy question to answer. Well, if you're in doubt, why did you write to your brother as if the story were true? You've met Aiden. You know what an intense little chap he is? Yes, I've met him. And he has a great deal of faith in what he believes. And he also has faith in his brother, Joffrey. Ouch. You don't pull your punches, do you, Beatty? In my business, it doesn't pay. Well, all I can say is this. Rourke claims to have seen the animal, and so do quite a number of Nagami natives whom I trouble to question. Their story sounded authentic. What it means is for others to decide. Where can I find Rourke? He left Kimberley for Johannesburg only last week. Good. That's where I'm heading. And after that? The Okavango Swamp Country. Then you are going to search for the fabulous unicorn. I promised a small, a very sick youngster that if there was a unicorn in Africa, I'd find him. And, Betty, I'm telling you, sure as I'm alive, walking up and down, pounding this here table, I seen that glorious creature with me own two eyes. And sober, too, I was, mind you. Just tell me what he looked like, Roger. There we was. Me and a couple of men gone in gun barriers. We heard a great pounding of hooves, like a great stag stomping out his authority. We push aside the brush, and he rose up before our very eyes, the most splendiferous beast it has ever been me privileged to view. What did he look like, Roger? Well, now. He was the size and the confirmation of a good to medium tall Irish hunter. What color was he? White, Mr. Beatty. White as snow. Are you sure there were no streaks of color in his coat? Well, no. There might have been a touch or two, a fleck, mind you, a color onto him. But for the most part, he were white. Did you note the tail? The tail was not like a horse. The hair onto it was short, except for a tuft at the end, like a lion. I see. And the horn? From the middle of his forehead sprouted a long, sharp, Twisted horn like a narwhal's tusk. What did the animal do? Do? No. He sniffed at us and wriggled his flared nostrils. Then he turned, glared full at me till I swear sparks was coming out of his eyes. Now, don't get carried away. He's a fact. He then stomped the ground with blows that had fractured elephant's back. I blinked my eyes, and in a flash he was gone. <sighs> Rook, did anyone ever tell you you should be a writer? Oh, well, no, I've been told I could turn a rather neat phrase. Turn it. You can make one roll over and do nip up. Uh, bless you, sir, for them kind words. Have you told me the truth? One was so. May I never meet my blessed mother in heaven if what I've told you is untrue. All right. Now, can you take me to the place where you saw this creature? To the exact spot, the precise clearing in the identical water hole. Good. Then let's go. <laughs> Have you ever in your life heard anyone talk like our friend, Ruth? <laughs> Never. Oh, I do hope he hasn't been handing us a lot of blarney. It'd take quite an imagination to make up the stuff he's been telling us. There's only one thing that bothers me. What's that, honey? A man would have to live to be a thousand years old to have lived through all his experiences. <laughs> That's a fact. Clyde, hmm? do you think he's leading us on a wild goose chase? I, I'm afraid so, honey. But why? What would he hope to gain? He gets paid for every day we're on the trail. I... Well, I just don't think anybody could be that cruel to a boy who's sick and whose heart is so full of faith. Sounds like that boy's not the only one with faith. Well, I do Here we are! This is it! It's Rourke. He found the place. Yeah, and right on time. Come on. This is the place, Vicky. The very place. Well... Looks like the one you described. There, there's the clearance. And there's the water hole where the beastie was taking his drink. Well, if there was such an animal, he could be hundreds of miles away from here by now. I don't think so, Betty. Well, what makes you say that? No, it's one hunting man to another. A wild animal that's different from the others has got to be stronger than them or he'll be killed, right? Well, that's usually right. If the creature is stronger, he'll pick out a good territory to stake his claim and then defend it with his life. That makes sense. In that case, our unicorn's bound to be somewhere around this here water hole. <laughs> Failing a career as a writer, Rourke, you'd have made a good detective. Uh, thank you, sir. No, from here we've got one or two choices. Namely, 
We'd chase all over the territory, following footprints and hoping and hoping. Or? Or we sit right here, nice and cozy and snug, and wait. You mean for the animal to show up here? If the other deductions is logical, he's bound to appear eventually. Which of the choices do you suggest we follow? Uh, actually, Mr. Betty, my back is giving me a devilment and my poor feet is killing me. <laughs> In other words, you're telling me we wait. Mr. Betty, you've guessed me actual thoughts. Harriet. Mm -hmm. Harriet, wake up, honey. Oh. Oh, is it morning? Not quite, but it'll be daylight very soon. Well, why the early call? Rourke just woke me. We've got a new visitor at the spring. Oh, not the unicorn. No, just a lone bull elephant, probably an advanced scout for the herd. Get dressed and come on down. Is he still there, Rourke? There, there he is. You sure give him this spot the double O. Now, what's all this about? Quiet. All right. But what's the idea? Please, honey, just watch. I'll explain later. That's all I've been getting for a week now. Shh. Wait. I'll explain later. Oh. The elephant's moving off. He's seen what he wants. And I've seen all I want. What's so exciting about an elephant in a water hole? At this particular water hole, it's... Maisie! Might... Look! Harry, look. Look over there. Why, Clyde... It's a unicorn. If it isn't, it sure looks like one. See, see, I told you. I told you. Oh, he's beautiful. I wish there were more daylight. It's hard to see. Uh, it don't take more light than this to see that curly horn. Yeah, but except for that horn, the animal looks pretty much like a kudu. But, Clyde, didn't you say that kudus, like other antelopes, run in herds? Not when they're as different as this one. It's probably an outcast. Don't you believe it? Uh-oh, the elephant's coming back. That'll scare our beauty away. No, look. He's stomping the ground. He's mad as a hornet. Why, that kudu's not only a freak, he's crazy. The elephant's charging. The unicorn's going to stand up to him. Why, this is fantastic. The unicorn's lowered his head. He's dashing at the elephant. Well, this is something I never expected to see. How could you? You never believe there was such a thing as a unicorn. Mr. Beatty? The animal charged. He seemed to be aiming that twisted horn at the elephant's throat. You see, Father, you see? No, no, Aiden, you mustn't get too excited. It's according to legend, all right. The unicorn is fearless. He'll even battle an elephant. But do go on, Mr. Beatty. What happened? At the last moment, the elephant raised his head. One tusk struck the twisted horn, and it snapped like a twig. Oh. I fired my rifle, and then both animals dashed off into the jungle. Well, are you disappointed, Aiden? Oh, no. No, I... I'm sure the unicorn was able to find a new water hole. I knew you'd say that. And look, here's the part that broke off the unicorn's horn. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, I've been reading about unicorns, too. Their horns, I understand, have a quality for absorbing poison. Perhaps this one does, too. Perhaps, Mrs. Beatty, perhaps. Well, we'd better go now. Goodbye, Aiden. Good luck. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. And thank you. Thank you so very much. Well, honey, the little fella seemed pretty happy. Thanks to you, dear. Me? I didn't do anything. Well, you didn't tell him you thought his unicorn was just a crazy kudu. Well? Tell me, honey. Do you really think it was a kudu? You know, Harriet, right this minute, I'm not too sure. Not too sure. <laughs> And now, here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty. Hunting a unicorn was one of the strangest expeditions I've ever undertaken, but it was worth it to make that boy happy. The next time we meet, you'll hear another thrilling adventure. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced and transcribed by Shirley Thomas, written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tausig. Music composed and conducted by Albert Glasser. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. 
This is a Commodore production.